Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger, and I'm excited for today's show. James Redfield is back. And after his last time on the show, he had mentioned about coming back on. And I don't think either of us could have predicted how the affairs of the world and humanity would go. And so, as it turns out, it was actually a very auspicious request. So I'm so glad we're going to be doing this. I'll tell you a little bit about the show, Dare to Dream podcast. I've been around for 13 years doing this, started out in radio and parlayed over to syndication for radio and podcast. It's been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards, for a Webby Award, and we are rated the, in the top 100 in all of the USA in self-improvement, as well as in many many countries throughout the world. So it's just wonderful to know that you are all listening and resonating. And thanks for when you write in. I read everything. Appreciate you so much. Today's show is really going to be based around the 12 spiritual insights for current times. And this is out of the book, Celestine Prophecies, and its sequel as well. New York Times bestseller, who holds a record for being a bestseller for more than most people ever, and also holds the vision of a conscious future. I, Debbie Dashinger, am a certified coach, and I run a visibility hub. I show you how to write a page turner book. I also have a company that takes authors' books to a guaranteed international bestseller, and I teach the ultimate visibility formula, how spiritual entrepreneurs can get booked on radio and podcasts and get massive results, like filling workshops, selling books, finding their clients and their tribe and their community. I pull back the curtain so you can get really great exposure for your really great message. If you'd like to find out more or get some free tools, go to debbie-dashinger.com. That's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com. I want to thank Dr. Dane here in Access Consciousness for sponsoring this show. They do beautiful energy healing work out into the world. So anywhere you're located, you can find them, their classes, their products, their services, their facilitators. It's Dr. Dane here, H-E-E-R.com and accessconsciousness.com. My question to you is, do you wanna hold the vision for a conscious future? I'm hearing a resounding yes over here. My guest, James Redfield, author of the New York Times bestseller, The Celestine Prophecy, says that something beautiful is happening. The world is moving from receiving spiritual insights to living in the consciousness of our lives. James is currently on the Celestine Prophecy Inspiration Tour at this very new time, and he shares the 12 insights from the Celestine series. Originally, James studied Eastern philosophies, including Taoism and Zen, while majoring in sociology. He received a master's degree in counseling and spent more than 15 years as a therapist. But he left his job because he wanted to write full time. Who knew? And he published The Celestine Prophecy, one of the most successful self-published books of all times. Redfield also wrote the sequel, The Tenth Insight, Holding the Vision, which also became a bestseller. And those two books spent a combined 74 weeks in the New York Times bestseller list. Several of his published works followed, including the film of the Celestine Prophecy. And to learn more about him, you can go to CelestineVision.com. And James Redfield, I welcome you to the Dare to Dream show. It's so great to have you back. Thank you. Nice to be with you, Debbie. Yeah, and, and I appreciate your dedication. James is experiencing an outage right now. And so just to join us today, he went into his car and is doing this conversation from the car. So thank you. for. I really appreciate you showing up because I feel like this conversation is so important. Absolutely. And only for you and your audience, because mm -hmm. I know that... Uh, you know, you understand uh, about consciousness, and I, I'm sure your audience does. Uh, I think it's a unique time in the world. I think that in spite of all the uh, shutdowns and, and uh, discord in a lot of ways, uh, there's an underlying movement 
toward expanded consciousness on the planet. Uh, this may turn out to be the reset, the sort of in your house with yourself breakthrough moment, you know, where it goes uh, completely viral. But I think there's a, there's a true awakening happening. It's been happening for a while, but uh, right now it's a unique situation. Uh, and we've talked about this, that there is, there are three generations, huge generations right now that mm -hmm. are, that are um, all reaching out uh, with questions uh, for a higher answers and uh, spiritual answers really. And uh, it's the baby boomers who are getting older. They want to know what their legacy is going to be. What, what have I left the world? How can I leave something that helps, uh, you know, a struggling world in, in many ways? Uh, the, uh, their children, the millennials, are reaching the key astrological age of 38 through 42, where, you know, they, they say, okay, I've, I've had children, I've, I've, I've found a way to make a living, but what do I really want to do with my life? You know, what, what, is, what is the true meaning of, of stepping into my voice and my message in the world? So that's a, that's a higher question. And then, then you have the, the older children of millennials, I mean, who are uh, facing college. You know, they're, uh, they're, they're in that age where they're, they're either facing college or already in college. And of course, they're asking, like you always do during, during that time of life, whether you're in college or whether you're just uh, exploring, uh, you know, what, how do I do this thing called life? How can I be an individual on my own? So you've got this huge majority of souls on the planet asking the higher questions. Mm -hmm. uh, that along with there has never been more people ever in the world meditating taking their spiritual consciousness seriously. Uh, and what you see is, you know, a kind of quiet searching, which I believe is uh, about to become very, very conscious of itself, in, in my view, uh, in search of a higher consciousness that can heal the many divisions in the world. How have you been navigating? Because you're somebody who travels all the time. You're really out there in a very public way. You do workshops. And now that all of that has been stopped, how are you managing what you do and what you offer to the world? And how is it for you? Well, it's, it certainly was a shock to everyone. Uh, yeah, but, you know, we, we do a lot of online now. We're actually uh, finishing up this construction of a in uh, of a uh, on selsingvision.com uh, anybody can read about it there it's uh, it's in process it's really probably only a few weeks away uh, and and so i'll be doing everything online for a while uh, it doesn't replace the yumminess of of taking a trip and meeting new people and all that goes with that but we're, mm -hmm. but we're trying to uh, use technology uh, and do live events just like we would on the road on on Zoom and other uh, uh, networks. Uh, so it's 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 pretty amazing that uh, that at least we have that vehicle to stay in touch and to really talk about you know this this higher level of inspiration that's happening out there. People who want to do something more with their lives and and are finding a way to do it. Before we deep dive into the insights, I love what you shared and especially that you were breaking down the age groups because I think this question and somebody did write in a question and I'm just taking a guess that this is a younger person. So it's beautiful because we're introducing people at a younger age to your work. One of the listeners was looking at the promotions coming up of the guests, saw you, loved it, went out and got your book and said she had ordered it, The Celestine Prophecies, but she said before she got it, she was wondering what the prophecies were or if the book was about prophecies. And so I want to let you answer that question. I know the answer, but you take it. Were there actual Celestine Prophecies? 
Well, you know, we're in the in the the first book, the uh, the Salstein prophecy, uh, uh, and and then the sequels, and there are four now, by the way, and uh, so we're uh, we're covering uh, what I call insights. Uh, it's a journey. The book, of course, is a journey. Uh, it's a way of uh, just letting yourself go to a novel and let yourself go into a spiritual search and and uh, and finding the energy of 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 you know those accomplishments. And, I mean, you just ride along on an adventure tale in the consciousness. Uh, so the book really is uh, covers nine insights. Uh, the other sequels uh, cover the uh, uh, three more. So, <clears throat> so we have have twelve insights altogether, which are, in my view, steps into consciousness. And when I say consciousness, I mean a consciousness of the higher uh, aspect of life, uh, the the spiritual, the uh, the opening of the heart, all that, that goes with it, uh, that goes on in life. That's a part of the life journey. So it's being consciousness and have insight into what is going on in the, on the planet with all of our lives, um, that we can, can utilize, mm -hmm. uh, and become aware of, and therefore have a greater, uh, meaningful journey through life. Uh, so it's, uh, it, it's about finding that inspiration and energy that we all can find uh, and tune in to the, to the way the, the world really works. And, I, and uh, you know, as I've, we've talked about, you know, I'm not making this up. These are, these are not James Redfield's, uh, you know, happy insights into life. <laughs> it's, you know, we're, you know, I follow and have followed with these insights, the, hum the long march is 100 years old now the, of the human potential movement, which was an organized kind of spontaneous debate and discussion that has lasted 100 years about what is, what is the real human potential? What is our greater consciousness that we can discover? And I believe this long march toward coming to consensus about life has has arrived uh in our time okay so, so i think that let me ask you so with everything are, going on today then these insights you're talking about are they becoming abilities for us to be able to stay at a higher consciousness like consistent that's, and ongoing that's right uh you know what when we get insight we become aware of and when we explore the insights deeper, not deeper, what happens is that we have the ability to maintain a higher, more inspired consciousness in life. And uh, it's uh, something that is, uh, again, dawning on the human race, this, this consensus of how to do this. Uh, it's never been easier to move into a higher consciousness and to get all the rewards of that, uh, mm -hmm. higher creativity, uh, higher, higher self-confidence, uh, a, a easier way to manifest things in your life. Uh, life is not supposed to be this hard yeah. and which is what we're learning, right? I mean, uh, how does it have to be this hard? Uh, or can we break through into something that's much more inspiring and actually works and helps our individual journeys and contributions unfold? Your first Celestine insight, numero uno, number one, is noticing synchronicity. That's right. I and uh, synchronicity, of course, is, is the experience of meaningful coincidences. In other, word, other words, that certain events happen in our lives that look, appear, and feel like it's beyond chance that this this connection this message coming to me this meeting of the love of our lives or this mm -hmm. this uh accomplishment you know is 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 something that uh it you know all uh, several events came together to allow this to happen in our lives so it's, it feels like a, a kind of destiny unfolding so the experience is 
this meaningful coincidence is happening that extends our life in some way, makes us larger, our journey uh, more inspiring, uh, clarifies what we want to do in life, solves a problem. It's, a, it's, it's built in, in my view, the fabric of life because everybody ha has had a, a mysterious uh, uh, coincidence happen to them. Yeah, to, as I said, yeah. You know, so everybody has these large moments. Maybe you get your dream job, or you meet your love of your life. As I said, uh, the, you remember those. You know, it, it, it was a destiny feeling to it. But you know, when we move into not just uh, not just uh, believing that that synchronicities are happening, but move into a kind of dedication to exploring these synchronicities. And what happens is that uh, synchronicity is the main um, evidence, really, that, there, that, that there's a spiritual design to the world. Uh, because we get help. You know, mm -hmm. if it's random, if everything is nothing but materialistic, uh, movement of matter and you know nothing means nothing and you know everything is just something we decide to do and has you know there's no moral compass really except the one we put on the world there's you know if that's true uh, then synchronicities would not happen and the people that hold that worldview and want to keep it would say, well, you're just making up the meaning, you know, this is just a, a random event, but you find meaning in it arbitrarily. Well, the, the, the fact is, there is the meaning that we derive. And uh, that meaning that we derive uh, is evidence, because it, it leads our lives forward, it's evidence that we get help in life. In other words, there's a spiritual design and, we, and when we figure out that spiritual design, life goes easier. Mysterious yeah. coincidences happen to open doors of opportunity for us. And uh, it, it's spectacular when we, when we just you know, step back and remember all the great synchronicities in our lives. There's a greater force at work here. I'm wondering how people can learn to notice synchronicities so they keep their awareness fully operative in the present. So how can they, it almost sounds like a matrix is going on when there's uh -huh. synchronicities because they may seem very independent and separate and yet when you're on the other side of it, you look back, it is without a doubt something amazing has been woven on our behalf. It really is a beautiful that, gift. How right. can people be mindful or in the present or aware of this so they can actually invite more in well we we can develop the ability to expect synchronicity mm. now in other words always always have a kind of alertness about you about your attitude toward life to notice the little things and notice these uh, events that maybe didn't pay much attention to. Uh, yeah, the, the synchronicities are, uh, can be very subtle. Uh, so with a, 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 an alertness, you know, that we sort of remind ourselves of, let's be alert. You know, let's, uh, let's, let's walk through life a little bit slower, have it, have it, uh, and being very alert to the possibility of a synchronicity and the, the person that we're walking in the the, walking in the, in the door of a restaurant uh, beside or who's sitting across the uh, next to us on a table, uh, the person uh, that happens to be riding on an airplane in the seat beside us. Yes. Uh, all, you know, th these can be, these possible synchronicities, if we're alert, uh, all it takes is a conversation and strike up a conversation. You know, what's going on with your life and suddenly, uh, you might get a message that is a it's a real eye opener or the, it 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 the feeling always is that they were des this was destined to happen this mm -hmm. message that I got at this moment extended 
my journey in life and, and, and toward what uh, clarification of what I want to do maybe. So uh, it's, it's the ability to stay alert. Uh, now, it also, is the, the other part of that equation is uh, we have to be bold. You know, we have to learn to strike up conversations with strangers. Mm. Now, you know, this is, this is uh, in, the, in the shutdown that, you know, we, we have a, we're a situation where we're, uh, we're separated from each other, right? Uh, but even then, maybe that's just practice. Uh, learn to, uh, you know, find the synchronicities online or uh, make, make, find some way to strike up a conversation with the people that cross your paths. The more that we can be bold, uh, if you see, you know, countless times, you know, I've, I've noticed that uh, uh, there's, there's kind of orbiting that happens between people where, you know, you go into a, a shopping mall, for instance, and there's someone, there's several people coming in as you come in. Uh, and then all of a sudden you see that same person maybe uh, in a, in a particular store with you, yeah. you go, well, I, mean, I walked in the door with that person, you know, and then maybe you see, uh, the, that person again at the, at the, uh, uh, you know, the, the food counter, you know, and, and, uh, what do you do with that? You, you, you go home and you t tell your, your spouse, Hey, you know, this funniest thing, I had this synchronicity. I saw this, this person three times. Well, that's just the, the beginning. You know, we have to learn to strike up a conversation with people. Wow. And in, in some areas, you, it's, it's easier to do than others. But uh, we, this, is, this is very important because uh, these, these are openings that are trying to happen in our lives. It's, it's help trying to be given to us in uh, the meeting of our goals, you know. That's really profound. I have had many synchronistic events, many, many, many. I could give so many examples, and they've all been beautiful. And I am seeing something in a new light listening to you right now. So I'm going to tell you a little secret. <laughs> so this is an awareness I'm having speaking to you. I am realizing I had a synchronistic event during COVID and right now. Right before COVID, my boyfriend and I broke up, which was horrible, right? To go into COVID like really, really alone and also heartbroken. I was not complete with that relationship. I was still very much in love with him and, um, and shocked because I feel like we had so much going for us, but it was what it was. And many, many weeks went by and then about six weeks in or so, we just started speaking as friends and um, at some point decided to do a hike with our dogs. And all of that to say way fast forward to right now, and we're back together. We're completely back <laughs> together again. And it's actually been this amazing blessing um, from COVID, but the synchronistic part, the meaningful coincidence, if you will, is that Honestly, I don't believe this ever would have happened if COVID had not happened. We probably would have just moved on with our lives. And because we all had to remain so separate and we were both single and separate, at some point we just inherently started to have conversation which led to friendship, which led you know, to at some point, you know, and it took a while for us to do a lot of healing, but to um, choose a new beginning for us. And I'm grateful. I'm really grateful. Well, that's a great story. And, and uh, there are just so many synchronicities that happen uh, once you start believing that they're there, that they're coming. Uh, and, 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 and again, become alert. Just keep yourself alert to these uh, you know, some people call them tiny miracles, helping hands. Nice. Uh, but it's, you know, the what happens with synchronicity is it's there in 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 several roles i mean it can if if all you have is a problem if you're expecting a synchronicity a solution to show up 
and you're exploring every uh, every possibility, okay. then what happens is you'll you'll find that doorway, that answer, that solution to what's going on, and and you know that's there's a lot of people displaced uh, economically right now. A lot of people have problems that they're having to grapple with, and yeah, you know, we just have to. I think it's important to learn that the the design of the world is actually to offer help, but we have to break through this abject materialism, you know, this secularism that, oh, there's nothing going on in the world except, you know, what we invent. Uh, now there's, there's, there's a destiny that, that is waiting for all of us if we step into these and take advantage of these synchronicities when they happen. Mm. There's a quote from you regarding insight number one, James, which is setting a field for synchronicity is a matter of putting yourself in a particular state of mind. It is easy to think about synchronicity intellectually, but unless you enter the state of mind where your prayer field will help, all you will do is glimpse the coincidences every once in a while. The prayer field. Oh my God. So talk about how do we enter the prayer field? How do we use the prayer field? Is there a process? Well, <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's an insight into the world. Uh, it's, it's, it's later on that we'll talk about it in, in greater length uh, at, at some point, but it's about using your intention. In other words, uh, one of the things that we, we're learning uh, spiritually and proving to ourselves is that intention matters. Uh, setting an intention for the things that you want to happen. Uh, and if it's more synchronicity, that's, that's better. Uh, but when we set a prayerful intention and that, that's one that's, uh, you know, oriented toward an opening of the heart, you know, love of, uh, you know, unfolding of, of, of the deep love emotion, master emotion, um, you know, we get in that state, we become more powerful because we're coming from love and service and helping. Uh, that that attitude turns up to the, the power in us so that it, from that point of view, uh, when the when the when the goal is helping, what happens is that our intentions enlarge, uh, and it's, it's absolutely important to set an intention to have more synchronicity because mm -hmm. that absolutely works. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, especially revol regarding goals that you're setting for yourself. Those goals unfold by these mysterious uh, messages that come from people and helping hands that come from people, but we have to notice. And it's a field. Once we set an intention, that's an energized field that we're, that, that, goes ahead of us in an, into a room or um, in, down ahead of our journey and can uh, touch all the people that uh, and, and uh, coordinate, it, it creates an additional coordination so people gravitate toward us with the synchronicities that they have uh, for us. And, and, and so intention matters. I, I do press media for the Conscious Life Expo each year. And one year I met some wonderful uh, channelers, speakers, you know, they had a booth. They also did their presentation and so forth. And we ended up having just the most incredible conversation at the time. This is years ago. And, uh, and they said to me, we're gonna hire you because we can tell that you are a runner and God brings us runners or helpers. And that just always stuck out for me. First of all, you know, it's so nice working with spiritual people who can see these things, right? You don't have to work that hard, they just get it, they feel you. And then the fact that they would use those words, like you're a runner, you're a helper, and that's actually a word that's used often in television and film, they call it a show runner. So, yeah. you know, that speaks to what you're talking about in helping in showing up to really be of service to other people, to you know, know where your part is and all that. And I, I wanna get to that in a little bit in further detail. Um, 
I want to sort of slide from where we are from synchronicity into the insight number two, which is the world has a spiritual design, which is so great. It sort of takes the onus off of us. If the wor world has a spiritual design, we definitely don't have to work so hard and effort so much and struggle. What is That's the right. Realm, right? It makes it's, it easy. It, it's not supposed to, life is not supposed to be this hard. And uh, the, the key is to uh, be alert to the synchronistic help that we get and to uh, make sure that we understand that it's about being of service. It's about giving, as, as we'll talk about in the third insight, you know, the, the karmic design. One of the things that, that's an insight into the world, you can't uh, live without. And that's understanding that there is a karmic design to the world. So whether things go easier or slower depends on how we operate. But we'll get to that. The second one, the second insight is just as important. And it's a uh, understanding that uh, all of historical progress, if you look back at a long story of humanity, what you see is that key people stepped up at just the right time and they made took action and and changed the world uh you know if you read any biography any biography of, of of someone who wanted to talk about uh how they they came to make a difference in the world you see synchronicity everywhere you know they they were uh uh guided by this synchronicity, this opening of opportunities uh, that put them in the right place and make a key difference in life. And you can see the history of humanity, not as just, uh, you know, unmeaningful uh, uh, movement of people around and the creating of technology and all that, that kind of thing. If, if, we, if we look at the progress we've made, you know, moving to uh, accept uh, people of all, all differences uh, as part of, as of, of, part of the uh, you know, humans that we uh, unify with. Uh, it, it's a long, that's a long journey of different cultures accepting each other, uh, you know, many ways war transcended and difficulties between people that were different cultures that were different. We, we have, a you know, we've moved uh, into larger and larger acceptance of people across the thousands of years of history uh, until now we have a kind of uh, emerging global uh, unity based on the acceptance of everyone in mm -hmm. all cultures. Mm -hmm. uh, and what happens there is just more people become uniting in this, in this group mind uh, of acceptance in the world. And, you know, eventually uh, in, at every juncture of that, heroes, you know, just the civil rights movement in, in, movement in the United States, the um, em emancipation of you know the the, uh, the movement to individual countries and cultures that were part of empires of various sorts you know this this the, the breakup of similar cultures together and then and then the the acceptance of all cultures that are different in the world is creates a kind of spiritual unity. Now it's not all completed, but if you look at every step in that, you see someone showing up right on time, Martin mm -hmm. Luther King, you know, right on time to mm -hmm. voice uh, a step in unity. So the, the second insight is really about understanding that, that we're on a march of progress with mm -hmm. humanity. Uh, and it's not about control from the top or any, anything like that. It's about the, the heart of humanity opening uh, at the individual level all over the world. And that is uh, this, something that 
will create a kind of consciousness fully. I mean, I think we're just, this is just the beginning, of course. Just understanding the second insight that really puts us into a search for what we as individuals are here to do, to change the world, to mm -hmm. offer our help. And the, the first thing you can do uh, to, to, to engage in the march of progress in the world is to become a synchronicity for another person. So uh, uh, we have to uh, make sure we're not just looking for synchronicities for ourselves from people, but listening for what can, we can share from our own lives that become a synchronicity, a message and a synchronicity, a breakthrough for the oh, people we meet. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So that makes so much sense. So things like this show, having you on, somebody can hear you and have a remembrance or a direction or something can pop for them which is so wonderful. Uh, that's why inspirational, motivational speakers can be so powerful because you can be in a certain mindset and suddenly you hear something and your whole world can change in that moment. You can take on the insights you're talking about and have a completely different life from this moment on. And, you know, it's happening everywhere in the world. I mean, w what we're opening to is the way the world works spiritually and that synchronicity is part of it. Uh, and knowing that we, each of us have, if, if we, a journey of helping that turns in, that can turn into being a part of a movement that opens up a, another level of consciousness and unity in the world. Mm -hmm. So if the world does have a spiritual design, or as you said, a karmic design, uh, so many questions coming up. So I get, the most important one I think is what's influencing what? Is the design influencing us? And if so, do we need to just widen back and be in a flow? Or is there a design and there's an us and we're actually influencing the design and maybe vice versa? Well, I think that, you know, the, the, the 12 insights that I think humanity has discovered in terms of spiritual consciousness uh, as the way the world really works. Uh, I think that, you know, there, you know, this is, this is something we can expect of the world. In other words, it always works. And, and we can get to karma and talk about that because, you know, we, uh, it, it, it's very important that we realize that that life doesn't have to be so hard. Uh, you know, there's, there's a way to get in alignment with the way the, the world is designed, the way that, you know, the karmic alignment, get aligned with that karmic system so that we become lucky. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's something that humanity uh, uh, is just awakening to. And I think that <clears throat> once we get into that, that uh, in alignment with the, with the karmic design, then that's when our creative powers go up another notch. Uh, things come to us, synchronicities provide more quickly uh, to the flow of our life so that we can become high-speed creators and, and make big, big movements of helping uh, mm -hmm. in the world. So, but I think it's very simple. The karmic design is very simple. It's, it's designed around the idea of helping, uh, just of giving and helping uh, each other. So in the way that works is that like attracts like. If you're a, if you're a giver, if you're trying to become, you know, listen to your intuition so that if, when, it, when you start to feel like you should tell someone a part of your life story that was meaningful to you and you, you do it, you just blur it out or you get it out there. And that person says, Oh my God, you know, that that's what I needed to hear right, right then. You know, you're a giver. Mm -hmm. If we can, if we can make synchronistic moments using our intuition for others, if we can uh, help in situations with money flow, uh, you know, that's that's what I mean by giving and, and what happens if is if we become those kind that kind of conscious giver, what happens is we draw more people into our lives that give to us. 
So mm-hmm. think about that. That means we get more synchronicity in our lives. That meant more questions answered, more problems solved. Uh, and it, you know, that can, that, that's what elevates the clarity about how to get things done in the world and solve our problems and realize that we have help, but we have to be helpers to get the kind of help that, that uh, could, can't, we could live with. In other words, you know, we're just figuring this out. Uh, yeah, a lot of people, if you watch in history, have been very lucky and fortunate. But if you look closely, you see that they were the givers of the world. They took mm-hmm. time to uh, talk about people with people. They took time to give information intuitively that, that came to them to give. Uh, and But if you're a taker, you know, like uh, the world has been for so long where you uh, are, we, we try to use people, we try to, uh, you know, use control dramas of various sorts to get attention energy from people that's kind of steal, <clears throat> steal energy from people. Or if we just take in all the, the awful ways, which is to sell people things they don't need or to mis, mislead them in some other way to, for personal gain. Yeah. Those are taking activities. Mm-hmm. And what happens if we're a taker is that we, draw our lives other takers okay mm-hmm. so <clears throat> i've seen it over and over again where a person has a habit of really taking and uh you know just sort of forcing their way in the world well what happens is that they'll draw in people that take them in almost exactly the same way and that's why it's not a punishment it's a eye opener when when people when you draw people in who who you recognize are, are taking in the same way that you're taking from others. You know, it's a, it's a wake up call. It's, it's, it shows the pain that that creates. So, you know, this karmic design is all designed to move people into the light side, into the giving side, uh, to, to, to wake up and realize that, Hey, that's, that's a better life on the giving side of life. And, and, it's a wake up call, I believe for the, for the world, uh, that, you know, we've got to be doing good in order to create good. And, uh, mm-hmm. and, and, and the helping is the, is the thing, you know, the intuitive yeah. helping. I- yeah. I, I have a quote from you. I want to, I want to say this right here because so, your quotes are, they're so powerful. And this is um, from James Redfield. It's from an interview he did in the Evolution Revolution. And the quote is, one of my teachers once said that the way you know you're on the right path is that it works. Now, that doesn't mean you don't run into blocks and brick walls, but it does mean that you can find a way around them or find a way to change yourself or your project in order to find the flow again and have it work. And that feels like that quote feels such a direct uh, link to what you're speaking about that in the spiritual design, if the world has a design, a pre-design, and we are part of that and executing it to find that flow means we get to be in that. There's ease in that. And then of course we get to do out into the world that which was ours and part of the design. Do we then have our own thoughts or is that an illusion? You know, are we a witness portion of our lives or an executing portion of our lives? Like, where do we come into that equation? Well, I think, I think we do both. We, we are very, yeah, we co-create uh, in that sense. Um, but I think the key is to allow ourselves to be guided. In other words, pay attention to those, those hunches and intuitions that come. Uh, and act on them, especially if it if it involves helping others uh, or helping you know the, the, a leadership in a say a, a business or a corporation. You know, it's all those intuitions come for a reason. And if we be brave uh, and act on it, uh, that's that's the key. 
because again, it opens just completely starts to open doors uh, quickly for us as people come in and help us. You know, James, I, besides having you on the show, I've seen you at the Conscious Life Expo um, and other places. And I, I just want to say as a witness, my experience of you all the time is this, which is saying a lot, drama free, you're just a really nice human being and <laughs> you're so kind and patient. I have seen you with swarms of people around you after you've spoken on stage and I've seen you patiently talk to each person and you're never in a rush, never with attitude. I mean, I'm thinking about this because in the very beginning of the interview, you said that you utilize these inner, these insights in your life. And for me, hearing you say that makes sense because that's how I see you show up. Is there a practice that you have so you can incorporate them and make them very mindful for you? Well, you know, I do. I, uh, I, I try to do what I call a prayer contemplation. And we'll get to that, you know, in this series. But, uh, you know, it's, a, it's an amazing thing when you, when you spend time meditating uh, and quieting your mind. And the, and the most important part is quieting uh, our emotions. Uh, because, you know, we, it, mindful, a lot of people know to do mindfulness meditation where you just, you just let go of all the chatter in your brain and all the, you know, all the talk and the self-talk and you just, every time it comes up, you just let it go and you come back to silence or you come back to a one word mantra. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, you also have to calm the heart. Uh, uh, or and what I mean is you have to calm the, uh, the, the emotions that keep you out of your heart. Mm. So if you, you know, we all get hit with anger and anxiety and hurts that we think other people have done. And, you know, they, they knock us out of our flow. I mean, they, they, it really is a, a kind of closing of the heart that happens when we get overwhelmed by these and, but everybody does. Nobody can, can keep this walk without getting slammed by something. Life happens, right? The key is to find this heart opening experience, which all the mystics talk about. It's called a peace that surpasses all understanding. Uh, every religious doctrine has th that phrase in some way uh and and i believe that it's love is the ticket there so we all we all have loved with an object you know we loved a a, a, a child or a, our parents or uh, that first teenage crush Yeah, you know, we we know what love feels like but it we all always seem to have to have an object, but love the the emotion of love, and I think that's some is the master emotion. That's just a love state. It's a state of love. It's loving uh, as an emotional condition of uh, our hearts. So if we're in a state of love, uh, and our <laughs> I've shared with you with this with you before, I argue about love with people i mean there are all these trainers and human potential experts and uh you know people who you know talk about coming to a place of high creativity and um you know self-development and all this you know but I, I and i bring up love you know as a as a meaningful ingredient in all that and they say, well, that's too mushy, James. It sounds like religion. We're talking about science-based self-development and all this mm -hmm. stuff, you know. And, and, you know, I just retort by saying love is a natural emotion. It's our master emotion. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, grounding in this love state is what keeps us from being slammed so much by the lower emotions. So it's, it's, a, it's an 
it's it's a, an emerging awakening of humanity that love is the key is the strongest emotion it, it, it it's what preserves our path in the world it it, 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 it our best creativity comes from a love-based helping of the world uh, so it's it's not much at all it's the strongest anyone can ever be and i think the people you know that's a big part of the achievement of the discussion of the by the human potential movement through through the centuries and through the decades that uh you know love is a part of this love is an aspect of consciousness in fact i argue that you can't even have higher consciousness without a love base opening of the heart mm -hmm. that that is higher consciousness and that defines higher consciousness otherwise you're just doing you're pacifying your ego a little bit and learning to create in different ways maybe but you're not doing it from the highest highest available consciousness mm, and, uh, and it's important it's important to know that that exists that peace yeah. that surpasses understanding mm. we can discover that the third insight this will be our final question for today we're getting close is the karmic design giving which we've been talking about anyway and um one of your quotes that I have for this third insight is, the universe is an energetically connected environment that is spiritually constructed to bring our greatest dreams into fruition. Man after my heart. All we have to do is align our lives with the universe's ruling principle, giving. The karmic principle of giving. Is giving, karma of giving, connected to quantum physics? Well, that's a very interesting question. And, um, you know, I, I think that uh, if, if quantum physics is the idea that the, the universe responds and opens up to our dreams, which is essentially uh, the interpretation, uh, if we talk about human potential, uh, yeah, giving has that kind of power uh, because it, and it's, you know, it's, it's giving of energy, you know, you know, we, we have, we always have a certain energy about us, right? It can be high, it can be low, uh, it, you know, but it, it, the low parts can be immediately uplifted, uh, those low experiences, anybody, because if you, if you, think of yourself as giving energy to another person. What happens is, especially if you're having eye, eye contact kind of conversation, what happens is that it, you can, if, if you intend to like cheer somebody up without saying a word, just lift their spirits, uh, give them a boost of energy. That's an intention that you have. And what that does is that's, that's part of a heart opening and you really get what you're giving first. In other words, you might be, uh, it's, it's a great thing to do if you're bummed out yourself, go find somebody else that's bummed out about something or depressed and just have a conversation about whatever, but be giving uh, intend to give energy because what happens is it opens up in you and overflows into the other person lifts your spirits while you're helping them lift theirs and uh, it's it's a it's a magical thing to do uh, to just learn to do uh, because so so this giving uh, that we've been talking about is is can be done uh, energetically uh, with others uh, and it's, uh, and it's, you know, the bottom line is it, we help others and that helps us. Uh, so we can get out of, I mean, and, and that's what people do. You know, if, if you look what, or what people do uh, for each other out there, you know, we're, you know, humans just naturally know to do that. It feels good to give to another person, to give, mm -hmm. give a, a, a word, an energy, a compliment, 
money. Especially during times like this, it's been really heartening to see how some people have chosen to show up and assist. The, some of the stories I read about people delivering things to people who are incapacitated or too old and couldn't, and they would show up everything from toilet paper to food, just, you know, sometimes knock and leave it at their door, sometimes anonymously pay for things. There's been so much kindness. And, um, and we're going to end there. Uh, folks, <laughs> join us for the rest of the series. Uh, obviously, James is really going to deliver. I love what I'm hearing. I can feel even my energy shifting having this conversation. Uh, thank you so much for blessing us today and being on the show and like being a trooper, even coming to your car to do the interview it was awesome. Well, my pleasure. It's a lot of fun. And I'm going to end with this. This is actually a quote and it's just parlaying off of what James said because it's so perfect. And I hope that you're getting something that you can take out into the world right now, which is his quote, we begin to experience the transforming reality of becoming an agent of the divine. Think, what would God do to help if he couldn't come and instead sent me? The wish to help others opens up our divine connection and strengthens our union with higher intelligence. And I love this idea of being an agent of the divine, that God sent me, sent you to help. So. How can you create good karma today as well as fulfill your dreams? How can you be an agent of God considering that you were probably sent to help somebody else? Thank you for tuning in to this number one transformation, Dare to Dream. Next week, uh, Ma Victoria Kwong is going to be on Truth Seeking Shaman with Ancestral Wisdom and shamanic practices in the Zulu and cross-cultural lineages. This woman is amazing. So we'll have some incredible conversation. If you're listening to this as a podcast and you'd like to see myself and my guest, go to YouTube. Enjoy there. A lot of people do. And it's youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. Please leave us a review. It helps other people find this show. And remember, don't just dare to dream. Dare to make all your dreams into your reality. And now you have a clue. You can start by giving.